Section 1. Let's get going. Introduction and Basic Concepts Industrial Psychology Research uh, in this module, you will learn the scientific logic of investigation. Identify problem and formulate a hypothesis. Design the study, carry out the research, test the hypothesis, communicate the results, e.g. through journal and the report. So statistics is, uh, is a way of communicating to the world out there or to other scientists of your research. So when you're conducting a research, you formulate a hypothesis, then you test it. When you test it, then you give your conclusion about those results. Then you can communicate through a journal, a project report. So basically, in this course, we're gonna, um, we, we are gonna cover the statistical part according to the sections uh, we have indicated here. So let's move on to the basics. So we'll start with the general definitions which you should know when you're doing this course so that when they come up, in later chapters, you will have an idea of what they are. So basically, variables are measured entities that can take on different values. Constants are quantities that do not change but will have the same value. For example, 2, the value of 2 doesn't change, it's a constant. It's different uh, from, a, from a certain number which has got a range. Let's say x is any number between 1 and 10, which means it's a variable, it can vary in that range. Continuous variables can take any value within a prescribed valid range. So these ones are typical with the t-test and ANOVA. Discrete variables can only take certain values within a range. Uh, the examples are in chi-square test, chi-square test. Independent variables are variables that are presumed to affect dependent or determine other variables. Dependent variables are variables affected or determined by independent variables. So it means the independent variables, they influence the dependent variables. So a population is an entire collection of objects or entities. A sample is a subset of a population. For example, the population of South Africa, and when you are in Gauteng, Gauteng is a subset of a population, which means it's a sample of South Africa. Statistical inference is the act of generalizing from a sample to a population. Let's say we want to make a study about maybe how many people are affected uh, by flu during the cold winter season. So but, we, so, but we cannot do it on a national level, the whole of South Africa. So what we do, we do a study in Gauteng. Then when we do a study in Gauteng, the result that we get, we can generalize them on the whole of South Africa. But there are rules that goes with statistical inferences. So let's move on. Uh, the, the frequency of a score refers to the number of times that the given score appears within a data set. For example, we might be having a data set uh, with different numbers. Let's say 1 to 20. Uh, so, so the frequency of each number there is 1 because it appears only one, one time. So for example, let me demonstrate. Let's say we have, uh, let's say a data set, so we have what, two, two, one, five, and uh, four. So when they say frequency of a score, which means how many times the number appears. So our data set has got five values. So we say the frequency of number two is two, because there are two twos here. The frequency of five is one. So basically, the frequency refers to the number of times that given score appears within a data set. A frequency distribution is a graphical representation of a data set indicating the set of scores on a variable on a variable together with their frequency. So it's mainly a graphical representation that different type of frequency distribution. We shall cover them in the following chapters. Um, Cumulative frequency refers to the frequency of all data items with a value less than or equal to a specific score. So cumulative frequency, it means if you have got a data set, it means you are just adding the previous values up to the current value until it reaches to the final 
frequency. Percentage frequency refers to the percentage of observation that fall in each outcome category. So, uh, for example, you can uh, the, the for example we gave a an example of uh, two 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 uh, four maybe five and one. So when you're talking about percentage frequency, you are just saying uh, how many numbers we have or items we have five. So what is the percentage frequency of two? So there are two two. So you say two over five. Uh, we get 0 0.4. Get 0 0.4, which is equal to 40%. Uh, which is equal to 40%. Um, uh, sorry about that. About 40 percent. So the next part uh, describing frequency distributions. Uh, the skewness. Skewness is the measure of frequency of symmetry or more precisely the lack of symmetry a positively or a negatively skewed uh, distribution shows that the majority of samples scoring in the lower range or upper range respectively the other part of it is spigedness or ketosis is the measure of whether the data are heavy tailed or light tailed relative to a normal distribution Uni model distribution have a single peak distribution, or bimodal distribution as two peak distribution. So we illustrate it on the next slide. So skewness, skewness. The coefficient of skewness is a measure of the degree of symmetry in the variable. So for example, you can see that this one is negatively skewed because it's most of the numbers are or the items are on the right side. And this one, the skewness of a normal distribution is zero because it's balanced. It's even. It's balanced from the left and to the right. And this one is positively skewed because most of the numbers are on the negative side, as you can see. So ketosis. The coefficient of ketosis is a measure of the degree of peakedness or flatness in the variable distribution. So you can see the 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 there are, there are different types of um, uh, ketosis. So you can see leptoketic. You can see it's more like pointed. No more. It's more like simple and smoother. And this one is more like downwards, closer to the horizontal line. So you get a general idea of your skewness and ketosis. So next time somebody say, what is the ketosis of this graph? You can. Have an idea of what we're talking about. So let's move on. Four types of measurement scales. There is the nominal scales are used for labeling variables without any quantitative value, e.g., gender, place of birth. Ordinal scales differentiate categories by ranking them, but the difference between each one is not really known. For example, um, socioeconomic. Uh, status, class, preference. For example, if someone is said he is rich or she is rich, and someone says she is poor or is poor, uh, is, is that term is relative to that individual. Uh, some, to, some, to some other person, the one you refer to be poor, to some other person is rich. So it's more based on the individual or the one who's classifying it. In the interval scales are numeric scales in which we know not only the order, but also the exact difference between the values. E.g. for temperature, 100 degrees Celsius is hotter than 50 degrees. But 0 degrees does not mean the absence of it, although it might feel like it. So what we are basically saying here is that interval scales, uh, they give us exact differences. You know that 100 degrees is hotter than 50 degrees, and 50 degrees is hotter than 0 degrees. But 0 degrees doesn't mean it's the absence of heat. Heat is still there, but it's just low. But ratio scales have all the characteristics of nominal, ordinal, and interval scales. 
plus a true zero point, e.g. weight. If if something doesn't have weight, it is zero. It's actually zero. There is no weight. You see that, that that's how it. So it's the same with time, height, and stuff like that. So you should know these four types of measurements: um, nominal scales, ordinal scales, interval scales, ratio scales. So let's get some examples. So nominal scales. What is your gender? It's normal. Is that they are male or a female? What is your color of your hair? Brown, black, blonde, gray, other? So, you see, it's, if you go back to the definition, I used for labeling variables without any quantitative value. So, it's just for labeling. Ordinal scales, on the other hand, uh, they, 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 they are subjective. Like, how do you feel today? Very happy, very unhappy, unhappy, okay, happy, very happy. So from each person it differs. The way you are feeling okay today to some person is like very unhappy. Because maybe they've got a, a higher grading of themselves or whatever. Uh, how satisfied are you with the, our service? Very satis unsatisfied or somewhat unsatisfied. So these are ordinary scales. They give, they rate or a certain thing as you can see. They differentiate categories by ranking them. Like the different between each other is not really known. So you see, uh, let's. Uh, so this is a summary of some of the things if you want to add your knowledge. So nominal uh, counts, yes. Sometimes it's European, yes. Mod, yes. But uh, they don't have a mean or a maiden. So ordinal, the order of values is known, yes. Counts, yes. Mod, yes. Me, yes, interval. They have all these, including you can quantify the difference. Remember, we spoke of temperature. You can know the difference whether it's 100 degrees or 50 degrees. Slightly, it's hot, it's hot also, but 100 degrees is hotter. You can add or subtract values, yes. You can add or subtract values. Uh, but ratios now, they add this one. You can multiply and divide values. As true zero, so you can see. That's, so that's all we can say about the four types of measurement. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions concerning this section or you need any further information, call us on 074-920-9697. Thank you and have a good day.